Hi, I'm Dara Hogan with the Omaha Public Schools Office of District Communications. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Spotlight. Can science experiments created by middle school students change the world? Some OPS students say yes. I stopped by Buffett Magnet Middle School Science and Engineering Fair where students pitched their ideas on making the world a better place. The science fair is intense at Buffett Magnet Middle School. More than 300 students volunteer to participate in the annual science fair inside the school gym. I like presenting my project to the judges and seeing what they think, uh, how my research turned out. To name a few, a diverse group of judges come from Omaha Public Schools, UNMC, and Lauritsen Gardens. College and high school students also participate. Hi, nice Rachel. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Eighth grade student Mac Nelson's science experiment is eliminating lasers. I chose um, how pilots are getting blinded by lasers and what film or material would reflect it, but you can still see through. For Nelson, this project isn't just a fascination with planes or lasers. A special person in his life is directly affected by it. My dad is a pilot and it, we travel through, the, through airplanes and there's airplanes flying around all the time and that's pretty scary that they can be taken down by a laser from somebody on the ground. Now Nelson is on a mission to help find a solution. I found that three layers of the reflective film work the best along with a layer of red, orange, red, orange. But I would use the red and orange film layered because that you're able to see through unlike the mirrored film. Like Nelson, John V. Solaria carries out a much different experiment, but with the same intent to help solve a nationwide concern. My project is the Solar Bottable. It's about how to make a viable light source out of materials where people who don't have, who can't afford electricity can make. Once Solaria created her experiment, she discovered it worked exactly like a light bulb. It's just that the, the amount of light it reflected was a little bit less than a low voltage light bulb, but it could be replaced. Whether it's protecting pilots or infusing a little light into someone's life, Solaria and Nelson know how to create a science experiment, deliver it, and change a life in the process. I just enjoyed the making of the contraption. It was, it was fun. It was really interesting to find that the different films, which ones worked. Buffett student John V. Solaria was a semi-finalist and Mac Nelson placed fifth in the science fair competition. This month, OPS students have the opportunity to move on to the Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair at the Henry Dorley Zoo. Well, if someone asked you to create a cinema-style movie in 48 hours, could you pull it off? Could you produce and record a newscast in less than three hours? Well, it may sound next to impossible, but several students did just that as part of the recent Career Center Skills USA regional competitions. Dozens of students at the Career Center competed in the contest in areas including broadcast news, digital cinema, photography, and video production. The winners of the competitions will have the opportunity to attend the State Skills USA Nebraska convention this spring. That event attracts hundreds of students from across the state for competitions in different career fields. Fontenelle Elementary students travel across the globe. Well, kind of. Thanks to Google's new Expeditions Pioneer program, students at least get a unique glimpse of places around the globe. Expeditions take students on a virtual journey to places like the Great Barrier Reef, U.S. monuments, Egypt, Mars, and much more with the Google Mattel Viewmaster. The trips are collections of virtual 360-degree experiences, 3D images, and video from around the world. The Viewmaster comes in a form of a cardboard box or a plastic headset. Anyone with a smartphone can experience the virtual tours with the right app. In the classroom, the Viewmaster allows teachers to select a destination with their Surface tablet and students jump right there. Google says there will be more than 2 million of these Viewmasters in circulation by the end of the year. Well, young adults with disabilities are making plans to embark on a once-in-a-lifetime traveling experience. The OPS Transition Program helps young adults with disabilities transition out of high school into independent living. This summer, their education will take a new twist as they travel to Ohio and Florida to reinforce skills they're already learning in the classroom. What seems like a typical field trip is a luxury for students involved in the Omaha Public Schools new transition club called CREW. 
Crew is a new inclusion club. It stands for Creating Rewarding Experiences on the Weekend, and it matches young adults with disabilities from the transition program with local college students. The transition program bridges the gap between high school and independent living for young adults with disabilities. Stephanie Goodrich, an OPS special education teacher, says the goal of Crew is to provide these students the same leisure activities as their peers. A lot of the students need structure and guidance, especially, you know, being independent in the community. So CREW gives those students that structure and guidance away from families and it makes it more of a natural, inclusive setting. 18 to 21 year old adults with disabilities are taken on field trips to places like Ragazzi's for pizza or the Ralston Arena to watch a hockey game. CREW has changed my life a lot because you see, sometimes when you have parents who are busy, you know, busy parents, you understand why they're busy, they mean well and all, but that comes with a few effects because I don't get out much, I don't get new experience and stuff, but thanks to crew and the transition program, I get out and see new places quite a lot, just like what my grandma did with me. Special education teachers Goodrich and Jordan Forehead expose the students to a variety of professional and fun activities. It is probably the happiest part of my whole job. They're so happy and are so comfortable and you get to see a side of them that you don't see in the classroom when they're stressed out about academics or they're worried about something that happened at work. College students from UNO, Creighton and Metro also help chaperone. It makes me feel better when I talk to them or get to know them because it makes them feel, I think it makes them feel more wanted. It's like mind changing, melts your heart a little bit. For Tina Yaza and Travante Johnson, before transition and crew, the world seemed intimidating, but not so much anymore. You get to see the world around you and see how like it's not so scary right? and how it's actually fun. Looking ahead to this summer, Forehead and Goodrich are hoping to take crew students on a professional trip to Jacksonville, Florida and Cincinnati, Ohio to present at a national employment conference. The purpose of the conference is to introduce state-of-the-art strategies for employment and how to have adults with disabilities uh, maintain employment in a typical community setting. The goal is to raise $50,000 to send 40 young adults, 6 college students and 4 chaperones on the trip. The students are going to be able to talk about um, things that are meaningful to them and they're going to talk about ways that employers can help support them to reduce undesirable behaviors at work. According to statistics, only 17% of young adults with disabilities are employed. We take for granted so many things, like so many experiences that I had when I was a young adult and I didn't think that much about it. Um, until I started doing crew and realized just how lucky we all are to have had those experiences because our students value the crew events. I haven't been hanging around with friends a lot so crew changed my life and helped me enjoy some time with my friends and have a great fun with them. The Omaha Schools Foundation is helping the group fundraise. If you're interested in sponsoring a young adult, you can email stephanie.goodrich at ops.org. Well, OPS JROTC cadets are stepping up to honor our nation's Medal of Honor recipients, and they're doing it one step at a time. The group's Medal of Honor Remembrance Walk and Run takes place Sunday, April 24th at Lake Sarinsky Park at 156th and F Streets. The event will be held rain or shine at 9 a.m. Registration is $20. It's all part of the celebration of the 100th anniversary of JROTC and ROTC. Proceeds from the run and walk will support the Medal of Honor wall being built at Heartland of America Park in downtown Omaha. Students will be participating in an uh, activity where they're going to learn about um, the 29 people that have received the Medal of Honor here in the state of Nebraska. If you'd like to register for the Medal of Honor Run and Walk, you can visit RaceIt.com. Bryan High School's Urban Agriculture and Food Science Academy students recently had the opportunity to visit with a U.S. Ambassador. Darcy Vetter is the Chief Agricultural Negotiator in the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative. Bryan's Ag Academy students gave short presentations to Vetter about the ag-related projects they've participated in at school. 
Well, I, I frankly have never seen a program as comprehensive uh, as this one, really looking at uh, opportunities for them to participate in production agriculture, a focus on uh, production science, uh, animal and plant sciences, and you know the opportunity that students talked about to write a sample bill of what they would think legislation around agriculture should be. Uh, just incredibly impressive, the comprehensive approach they're taking to preparing them to participate in the field of food and ag. Better made the visit to Brian High because it's the only agricultural program in Omaha Public Schools. Brian is also the only high school in the nation that uses an academy program to teach the curriculum for ag science education. As you're driving around the city, you'll notice artwork showcased on billboards during March for Youth Art Month. The artwork displayed was created by OPS students in kindergarten through 12th grade. The billboards are expected to be up through the end of March. A number of local banks and community organizations, including the Omaha Schools Foundation and the Omaha Education Association, sponsored the billboards. That's all for this edition of The Spotlight. If you'd like to see this program again, watch for it on the Knowledge Network, Cox Channel 18. You can also see it on our YouTube channel. Just do a search for OPS Web TV. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.